Mercury is a neurotoxic mutagenic metal that can harm the nervous system, the lungs, the kidneys, and the immune system. At room temperature, it releases vapors that, though invisible to the naked eye, can be easily breathed in. In spite of being a health threat, mercury is used in a variety of products found in hospitals, including thermometers, pigmo manometers, gastrointestinal tubes, fluorescent lamps, and dental amalgam fillings. Safer, more reliable, and cost-effective alternatives do exist for most of these products. Therefore, the first step for dealing with this situation is to eliminate the use of medical supplies containing mercury. This is the only possible option we have if we want to put an end to this problem. It is of utmost importance to ensure that waste resulting from the process of replacing mercury-containing supplies be properly managed and stored. Otherwise, mercury will end up in the environment where it can easily travel through air, soil and water to finally become part of our food system. Products containing mercury tend to be fragile, so spills are very common in hospitals. For cleaning up spills, assemble a kit with some elements that will facilitate the task and reduce the risks. These items include Personal protection equipment, latex or nitrile gloves, safety goggles or protective eyewear, respiratory protection, protective clothing, airtight, rigid plastic containers with some water or vapor suppression agent, airtight, puncture resistant, rigid plastic or steel containers, airtight, sealable plastic bags, plastic waste bags, flashlight, thin pieces of cardboard or plastic, dropper or syringe without the needle, sticky tape, sulfur powder, hand soap and paper towels, mercury waste labels. Each time the kit is used, it is important to replace the supplies that were used. Before starting, remove jewelry, watches and any other element that could bind with mercury. Then, put on personal protection equipment. Block off food traffic on the site and evacuate the area. To prevent the mercury beads from traveling further, block their path with rags that the mercury cannot pass through. To prevent the spread of mercury to the other areas, close all interior doors and turn off heating or air conditioning systems that connect to other areas of the building. At the same time, dilute the vapor concentrations in the air by turning on a fan and opening all exterior windows. It is advisable to ventilate the area for 48 hours. Start with the parts that are easier to clean. Remove visible mercury bits and broken glass. Use the flashlight and the sticky tape to search for and remove the tiny mercury droplets. Use the sulfur powder to identify and remove any remaining mercury. This element binds with the metal and changes from yellow to brown. Sprinkle sulfur powder on cracks and surfaces that came into contact with mercury. If you find that fabrics, carpets or other upholstery elements are contaminated, dispose of them too. If mercury was spilled over a drain or sink, work with the facility engineer or responsible person to remove and replace the trap or take the necessary corrective actions. Dispose of the old track with the rest of the waste. Once you have finished, take off the personal protection equipment. These items must be disposed of or decontaminated as appropriate. Wash your hands and all exposed skin with soap and water. Label all contaminated bags and containers with the following warning. Danger! Mercury waste! In the event of a spill, never pour mercury down the drain. Use a vacuum cleaner. Wash mercury-contaminated clothing, rugs, or other fabrics in a washing machine. Use a broom to sweep up the mercury. Mercury waste. 
must be kept separate from other types of waste and isolated from the daily activities of the hospital. Therefore, coordination efforts must be undertaken with the facility authorities in order to assign or build a restricted access room to this end. A warehouse that is not used and that can be reconditioned could be a good option. To determine the size of the storage space, estimate the volume of waste that the hospital will generate, take into account that containers, shelves, corridors, etc. must be included. Once the storage room is sited, make sure it can meet the following requirements. The exhaust vent should not direct air towards crowded areas. The floor must be made of a material that is smooth and impenetrable to mercury, with barriers or spill containment trays directly below the waste containers to prevent spills from spreading. Personal protection equipment, tools and wash areas should be located at the entrance. Heat, smoke and fire detection and alarm systems, as well as a fire suppression system, should be installed. The entrance should be marked with warning signs. The storage space should be kept cool, ideally below 25 degrees Celsius and below 30% relative humidity to prevent corrosion if steel containers and shelves are used. In general terms, we can identify two types of mercury waste. First, there are the mercury containing equipment and supplies. This category includes the equipment in good condition that is no longer used because it was replaced with safer non-mercury alternatives. In this case, it is of utmost importance to pack these supplies and to take all necessary measures to prevent them from breaking. The original package can be used if still available. If the equipment is broken, you will have to check how it was packed and reinforce the packaging if necessary in order to avoid the release of vapors. If the equipment contains broken, sharp or glass materials, the container will need to be puncture resistant as well as airtight. Second, there are dental amalgams and elemental mercury. These types of waste will keep generating in small quantities until the activities that produce them are substituted. Therefore, you will need a container that is both airtight and easy to open and reseal repeatedly and made of a material that does not react or bind with mercury. With regard to size, choose a container small enough to lift. Keep in mind the weight of the mercury and make sure it does not exceed the weight capacity of shelves. Add a vapor separation agent to protect workers. As an additional safety measure, you can always use a secondary container to further prevent the release of mercury vapors. Once in use, the storage space should be inspected periodically to check for leaks, corroded or broken containers, and to see that everything is in good condition. Ideally, the levels of mercury in the air should be monitored. To facilitate control and enhance its management, records and inventories should be maintained, including the types and quantities of waste. Organize training programs to ensure that all individuals involved in the management of these wastes are fully informed of the health risks, management and storage of mercury. The mercury safety data sheet must be available to all personnel. These guidelines will give you a basic idea of what needs to be taken into account when planning mercury waste management in a hospital. For further reading, see the guidance on the cleanup, temporary or intermediate storage and transport of mercury waste from healthcare facilities available in Healthcare Without Harm's website, www.noharm.org.